and now we'll be talking about the mechanism of action of local anesthesia now what happens here you know the l8 causes displacement of the calcium from the nerve receptor site So, if for example, this is your nerve receptor site, what local anesthesia does is, you know, you have calcium here and LA will come and displace this calcium. After displacement of the calcium, the LA will rather bind to this place where the calcium would bind. And because of the binding, let's have it as a second stage over here, because of the binding of the LA over here, the sodium channel are blocked. If you remember during the activation during nerve conduction, we have seen that the depolarization that results in the conduction of impulse through the nerve is because of this sodium influx through the nerve membrane. Now, since LA blocks the sodium influx, what we have is the blockage of the sodium channel and Thus, there is decrease in the sodium conductance. There is depression in the rate of depolarization that was happening because of this sodium inflow. And thus, there is lack of action potential. Okay, so that is how our LA acts. Now, now you know, when, when we are talking about the mechanism of action of the local anesthesia, we'll just see it at a molecular level as well before that we need to understand what la is at the molecular level most of the injectable local anesthesia they are tertiary amines except few amongst that we have these prilocaine hexylcane and which are secondary amines but most of them are tertiary amines and point to be noted that they have two parts one is the hydrophobic part which is a larger part one is the hydrophobic part which is a larger part and the second is the hydrophilic part now why do we need these two parts why do la need these two parts now if you just uh, have a look at the site wherein LA is injected. For example, you know, this is the mucous membrane and this is the nerve over here, you know. And I'll just draw the needle in blue. We are trying to reach the nerve, but our needle usually reaches the vicinity of the nerve rather than reaching the nerve itself. So the LA is deposited. Let's make LA in some magenta color over here. Now, when the LA is deposited in the tissue, LA needs to travel to the nerve. This traveling of LA to the nerve is made possible by the hydrophilic part. Because if you don't have the hydrophilic part, the LA would not dissolve and move through the tissues. So for the LA to move through the tissue, we need this hydrophilic part. So LA without the hydrophilic part, they are not suited for injections. But they are very good for topical anesthesia. But because in topical anesthesia, what we need is we do not need the LA to travel through. You know, in topical anesthesia, we have the mucous membrane. We apply LA over here. And LA needs to diffuse through this skin, which is rather more easily crossed by lipid soluble part. So you can say this hydrophobic part would be able to cross the mucous membrane, but hydrophilic part is important in injectable anesthesia, injectable local anesthesia. Other than that, other than, you know, this is out of the way slide, we have uh, two types of local anesthesia. We have the amide type and ester type. So we'll be talking about it later. Let's, let's just stick to the molecular points over here. Local anesthesia, they are weakly basic and they combine with acids. Now, anything basic will have affinity for the acids. And ultimately, when they combine with acids, they accept the hydrogen there and they form the local anesthetic salts. So if you notice here, we have the local anesthetic salt right now whenever this salt is in solution there are two possibilities you know it will either exist as the undissociated part that is it is a positively charged molecule so it is cation or it may dissociate it into base and proton this base is neutral 
okay so keep in mind what you have to uh, remember to this two parts you know we have to remember this neutral base and this positively charged molecule that is cation now this two things they exist in equilibrium you know there is a tendency for cation to get converted to base and there is tendency for base to get converted to cation and this happens by you know either release or the intake of a proton right so with this information we go ahead and see what is the role of this positively charged molecule cation or this base in the action of la the uncharged lipid soluble free base the base that was dissociated let me write the formula for you again over here so that we remember it we had rnh plus that was our cation and on the other side we had this base the neutral base plus the proton right this was the equation that would go in either direction now this uncharged lipid soluble free base it is responsible for diffusion through nerve sheath now in the previous slide where we were talking about the hydrophilic and the hydrophobic part what we were talking was supposedly this is the nerve sheath and this is a mucous membrane and this is the needle this is our la what we were talking that this la would reach to the nerve membrane because of the hydrophilic part right now after reaching the nerve membrane la has to enter the nerve membrane local anesthesia has to enter the nerve membrane this diffusion through the membrane is done by this part that is the base the neutral base part right after the penetration after the penetration we want this to get converted back to the cation because cation is the one which is responsible for binding to the receptor site which we had been talking earlier you know we had been talking earlier how the la displaces the calcium and binds to a receptor site now when we talk about la displacing the calcium and binding to the receptor site we need this form of la to be present okay so what happens is we have this base it penetrates the membrane goes inside gets converted to the cation again because the, the mechanism the the process is reversible the equation is reversible so it gets converted to cation and then this cation goes and acts on the receptor let's see it diagrammatically in the next slide you know it's just a representative diagram so if you notice here this is the equation this was our cation and this is the base and the proton now what happens is this base is easily penetrated this is the one responsible for penetration through the nerve membrane nerve sheath right now this enters the nerve membrane when it enters inside the nerve it reacts with a proton to again form this cation so once we get this cation this cation is responsible for acting on the nerve receptors thus blocking the sodium channels right and causing the anesthetic action of the local anesthesia hopefully that makes it clear with this we go ahead now we very well know that we want this neutral base for entry into the nerve now if we have low ph in low ph we have high h plus concentration in such a scenario what happens is this equation tries to go in this direction so we have more of this cationic form rather than this base form but we need this base form for the penetration into the nerve but in low ph that is the acidic ph we have this more so because of this what happens is in acidic ph the anesthesia doesn't act well when we talk about the scenario in the high ph the same thing goes in this direction so in high ph we have more of this neutral base so in acidic ph for example in the presence of pus 
reaction shifts to the left and the free base form that is required for the diffusion. Don't forget guys, when we talk about the free base form, it is nothing but Rn. This Rn form which is required for the diffusion, it is decreased, thus the LA action decreases. Next come to the pH of local anesthesia itself. When we were talking about the pus, we were talking about the pH decrease, you know, low pH in the surrounding. Now let's talk about the pH of local anesthesia. All the commercially available pH, all the commercially available LA without the local, uh, without the vasoconstrictor, they have a pH of approximately 5.5 to 7. So you can say a little less than neutral, a little on the acidic side. Now when they are injected into the tissues, these tissues, they have a lot of buffering capacity. So what they do is they buffer these LA, increasing their pH. We, we already have seen how increasing the pH will make R and more available and the local anesthesia action will uh, be faster causing the ons in you know faster onset of action. So because of this, this increase in pH is required and this is brought about by buffering mechanism, buffering action of the tissues. Now the LAs who, which have the vasoconstrictors. These LAs which have the vasoconstrictors, you know, we, we know why vasoconstrictors are added. Vasoconstrictors are added to increase the duration of action, right, to decrease the toxicity and, you know, blah, blah, we'll, we'll just talk about it later, okay. So, now we have these LAs with vasoconstrictors. These LAs with vasoconstrictors, they are acidified by the manufacturers, why they are acidified? They are acidified, acidified on purpose. Now, this acidification is important to retard the oxidation of vasoconstrictor. Okay. And because of this, now the pH is decreased because of this acidification. Now for tissues to buffer this pH, which is, you know, even more less, it will take more time. So, the onset of action of LA, it gets decreased in LA with vasoconstrict, right? All the things are correlated. You have to just understand, you know, the effect of pH and uh, how the base acts and how the cation acts and everything will be very easy to remember. Let's go ahead with this. This second point, there's one more point which is related to the buffering capacity. We had been talking about the buffering capacities of the tissues. Now, now when we say buffering capacities of the tissue, this is the, you know, the skin and this is the nerve and this is the injection. So, these are the tissue which buffer the LA. But this is about this tissue. But when we talk about the mucous membrane, the mucous membrane itself, the buffering capacity is very low. So, if we have a topical anesthetic, you know, topical anesthetic, which will be just sprayed on the mucous membrane and it has to act on these peripheral nerves, there wouldn't be this tissue helping out to neutralize the pH to act as a buffer. So, in such case, we have to increase the pH of the topical anesthetics so that no buffering is needed because anyways, mucous membrane will not be able, able to buffer it well, right? Second thing is PKA. We have come across PKA when we were talking about the pharmacology. We have come across it in biochemistry. And we know, you know, according to the Henderson Hazelbeck's equation, that PKA is a pH at which a compound is half ionized and half unionized. Now, when we considered about um, any compound, and let's, let's uh, talk about this base, this ion form and this base form of LA, right? So, when we talk about local anesthesia, in total, PKA of a particular local anesthesia is a pH, a pH in which these two, that is the dissociated part and undissociated part are equal in number. So, we can say RNH is equal to RN. 
okay it is this point wherein we have equal number of rnh and rn it's an equilibrium point okay so that is what these two sentences mean pk is a ph point at which compound is half in ionized and half in unionized state when the ph of a solution and pk are equal the drug exists in free base form and half exists as cations that's what so pk is inversely proportional to the onset of action how does this point work now in such a scenario you know we know that uh, if a drug has has higher pk it will need higher ph at which it will exist in this form right and in such a scenario tissue will need to buffer this drug so much to make it reach this high ph which is equal to its pk right so tissue will need to buffer a lot that is why you know this buffering action will take a lot of time and thus onset of action will be delayed it won't it won't be fast the pk is inversely proportional to the onset of action right you want me to explain it once again i'll just um, go to the next slide let's see what we have in here yeah we have the factors you know with all this scenario we have now the factors summarized up uh, which affect the duration of action and all those things so in this we have this pk a uh, lower pk more rapid onset of action because at low pk we have more rn molecules present to diffuse through the nerve sheath how how does that work if we have low pk a right thus if we have low pk at low ph itself we'll have a lot of rn and these rn will diffuse through the nerve and the onset time is decreased the second point is lipid solubility lipid solubility is is direct you know anything that is lipid soluble will easily go through the membrane and thus obviously it will increase the anesthetic potency so lipid solubility is it affects the potency of the anesthetic i mean if the anesthetic solution is lipid soluble all of it will you know cross the nerve membrane and will be available for action but if it is not lipid soluble it will be difficult for it to reach the nerve cross the nerve membrane so it may happen that a portion of it does not cross the membrane itself this you know when we say potency potency means for example uh less amount of la causing the same amount of action that will happen only if all the la crosses the membrane that is how lipid solubility affects the anesthetic potency then we have protein binding protein binding and affects the duration how it affects the duration we already know how the la acts la goes and attaches to the receptor receptors are nothing but the proteins if la goes and attaches to the these protein receptors and the this complex is you know tightly bound or you know affinity is more so if the protein binding is increased it allows the anesthetic cation to be firmly attached to the protein located at the receptor site so what is affected is the duration of action that is increased then we have non nervous tissue diffusibility now this point you know it is again the same thing we have the mucous membrane uh, we have the skin we have the nerve and we have the injection here now this is the tissue this is a local anesthesia which is trying to reach the nerve now if rather than its diffusion into only the nerves if it is easily diffusible into other tissues like muscles and you know whatever tissues the connective tissue and everything if if it has a tendency to go into all the other tissues the onset will obviously be delayed because it will go into all the other tissues 
before reaching the nerve. So obviously this point affects the onset. Then we have a point that is vasodilator activity. It's, it's obvious, you know. So if an anesthetic has a vasodilator activity, as soon as it goes to the tissues, there will be vasodilatation. And because of this vasodilatation, the vessels will speed up the carriage of the anesthesia to the site. That is anesthetic potency. Now, not only carries to this, but if we have vasodilatation, it will be just washed off. Local anesthesia would be washed off by this increased blood flow because of this low, less LA will be available for action. Secondly, once LA has already acted because of vasodilatation, this LA will be carried out, you know, metabolized and washed away, away faster thus resulting in decreased duration of action. That is how the potency is decreased and the duration of the action is decreased. Now, you have to summarize, you know, in this chart, what increases the duration? Protein binding increases the duration. What decreases the duration? Vasodilator activity decreases the duration. What decreases the time of onset? If, if it diffuses everywhere, it decreases the time of onset. Other than that, we have seen that high pk it will increase the time of onset and low pk will decrease the times of uh, time of onset so you know this chart is very important and if you understand the thing it will be easy for you to remember the chart and there's one more very important point of about local anesthesia how the local anesthesia act based on the nerve tissue located near the surface or away from the surface okay uh, let's uh, simply see it's it's very simple fascicula located near the surface are the first one to be reached by LA thus they are the one that are blocked completely before you know shortly after the injection but to reach the deep inside it will take a little time okay so let's just see it in the plain slide over here uh, let me just have the core or the inner nerve sheath these are the inner fibers and let me just draw the outer fibers on the top of it okay I'm draw drawing the outer layer in yellow so when the LA acts when the LA acts these outer fibers or the mantle fibers they are the one to anesthetize first okay and the core fiber that is the magenta fibers core fibers they are the one where LA reaches late. So they are the one to anesthetize later. Okay. Now when we talk about the distribution of these fibers to the teeth, you know, when we say, uh, okay, one thing to understand here, proximal is from where the nerve is coming and distal is where the nerve is going finally you know for example we are starting from inferior if we talk about the inferior alveolar nerve inferior alveolar nerve curves comes from the ramus it first supplies the molars and then it reaches the incisors. So hopefully, hopefully you know there's nothing much to talk about it it's, it's an obvious fact you all know about it right so when this during this path when we talk about the distribution to the teeth how it happens is First, the outer fibers are supplied. So, these yellow fibers, they supply the proximal teeth like molars, like that. And these deep core fibers, they reach the farther away teeth or the distal teeth like incisors. Okay. Now, what we were talking about LA was LA first blocks the mental fibers and then blocks the core fibers. The same sequence will happen to the teeth. The first we'll have the blockage of um, sensation in the molars and then we'll have it in incisors. And when we talk about the recovery, how it happens is first mental fibers, they lose the LA because they are outside and LA will be washed out so easily. So this will be the first to come out of anesthesia, you know, recover out of anesthesia and this will be the last one so same process you know in action of onset and even in recovery it's the same direction it will happen 
there's this one, there's one simple uh, fact based thing about how the la produces loss of function you know when we talk about the loss of function the first function to be lost is pain is pain then we have the temperature then touch proprioception and followed by skeletal muscle tone very important mcq 